How do you? Last week I covered every way to spend bells in every Animal Crossing, but now it's time for the other side of that coin, every way to make bells in every single Animal Crossing. <laughs> And to absolutely no one's surprise, the number one way to make bells across every Animal Crossing is to sell junk to Tom Nook. He'll accept almost anything. Of course, some things are more profitable than others. In my case, as a tyke, selling shells was one of my favorite things. They respawn frequently, they're easy to pick up, but there's not a huge profit. And then as I aged, I switched to fruit. A little more effort and it takes a while to respawn but you do get a pretty good payoff if it's all foreign fruit and then as a teen I progressed on to fish and the occasional bug you know if I saw it and I went oh that one's worthwhile I would grab it as a teenager my holy grail was turnips I was super into turnip trading online of course if you do not have the support of strangers on the internet turnip trading can be incredibly risky and recently the main part of my portfolio across the five games I'm playing is fossils. Of course, there's only three a day, but it's a pretty good payoff. And for seasonal selling, mushrooms can be quite profitable. And holiday furniture is also a source I don't tap frequently. I just want to keep it all. But if you're like, this is ugly, but I had fun participating in the event, so I got it all. It can be a good source of income. So those are the main things you can sell throughout every game, but New Leaf adds some things that you'll be selling regularly, like sea creatures, the coffee beans that Brewster uses as payment for your part-time work, and also the gems you get from rocks every day. And in New Horizons, I also add some things that you might start regularly selling, such as the vegetables and flowers. Really only the gold and blue roses are worth selling, but you get a thousand for each one. So that's awesome. And there's also craftables, taking all these raw materials together and making something that sells for even more. And both New Leaf and New Horizons have a hot item. I've never really participated in this, but you know, you could find something that is easy to make and then you can increase your money a little bit. And of course, in New Leaf, you don't want to sell to Timmy and Tommy because they only pay you 80% of what it's worth. You want to take it to retail who pays the 100%. And in New Horizons, there's a similar situation where if you sell through the drop box, you'll only get 80% so you don't want to sell anything high value there. Just whatever you're getting right up to clear your pockets. Ooh, this is my piece de resistance lately when it comes to making bells. And that is the money rock. Depending on the game, you can make 8,000 to 16,000 a day from the money rock. And depending on your luck and your feng shui, it can be even more than that. My entire portfolio for the first three games is just fossils and bell rocks. None of that grindy fishing or risky turnip trading. Another risky way of making money is the money tree. In GameCube and New Horizons, these can only be planted in a money spot, so you only get one a day. For GameCube, the chance is in, will it even grow? And for New Leaf, if you put a high amount in, there's a chance it'll triple it, but there's also a higher chance that it won't, and you'll end up losing money. But if you do a lower amount, it tends to triple it. And for the three games in between, all you need is a gold shovel. You can plant as many money trees as you want, right, left, and center. It's just a luck game as to whether or not they're gonna triple your money. And speaking of money and trees, every day, $100 bell bags spawn in the trees, so you can shake them down for those. Not really worth it. If you do have really good luck with money, you can get more. So maybe it's worth it after that. And from Wild World onward, you do get interest from the Bank of Nook. For Wild World City Folk and New Leaf, that's 0.5%, up to 99,999. And in New Horizons, they gypped us and took it down to 0.05%. And speaking of jippiness, <laughs> You can also make money from the villagers and igloos and tents. They'll buy your items off of you and depending on how well you do at the game, which most of these games are luck based, not skill based, they'll pay you more for that item. I think overall it's worth it if you enjoy doing the games because you will sell things for more than what you would sell them at Nook. However, it is very time consuming. And speaking of villagers, there's quite a few ways to make money off villagers. They'll randomly come up and ask to buy an item off of you, doing them favors in GameCube, they'll pay you back with money. They'll definitely never be like your main source of income, but they can be a little nickel and dime here and there. And then there's your mother for things like New Year's, your birthday, moving into the town. She'll send you a little wad of bells. 
Okay, moving on to what's unique in every game. First up, there's GameCube, and as mentioned, there's the glow spot for a thousand bells a day. And you can also give items to your gyroid to sell. You set the price, but the only people who can buy these are people who live in your town or visit it. So no villagers. So if you're playing all alone, you have no friends that ever visit, it's not gonna sell, but. In Wild World, there's three unique ways. Number one is selling to the Able Sisters. This is the only game where you can sell things to the Able Sisters, and even then you can only sell clothing items to them. And I think they pay you the same amount Nook would pay, so it's kind of just a convenience thing. Number two is the insurance you get from Lyle. As mentioned last week, you spend 3,000 to get this insurance, and every time you trip or get stung by a bee, you get 100 bells, so it takes doing that 30 times to start making a profit on that. Definitely not worth it. And if you also want counterfeit insurance, there's another 3,000 and you have to show him the counterfeit painting and then he sends you a hundred bells. So basically you need to get over 30 counterfeits for that to be of any use. Total scam. Ooh, this next one was my bread and butter as a child, the flea market. I would stock up on sharks and beetles galore and fill my house with them and then have my villagers come one by one and sell each of them for double the price. <laughs> you can sell every item for up to double what Nook would buy it for. It was a good time. It was a good money maker. 30,000 for great white, like, ooh. It's good stuff. And that tradition does continue on to city folk, where the only other special way to make money is the auction house. And just like the gyroid, villagers can't buy these things. It's only people living in your town or someone who visited through Wi-Fi. So when it comes to New Leaf, there's a few unique ways to make them bells. As mentioned previously, retail is your number one way to sell things off, but there's also another way to sell in retail, and that is through the resale slots that are there. Unlike City Folk and GameCube, these can be bought by villagers. However, if you do too high of a price, they ain't gonna buy it. Number one is going to the Dream Suite and uploading your dream. You get 5,000 bells for this. Number two is exchanging meow coupons for bells. Meow coupons are kind of like your nook mile tickets in the way that you earn them. Just doing little things throughout the town earns you them. And they'll have like daily, weekly, and monthly ones to get done. One of these coupons will get you 3,000 bells. And this is the least profitable way to make money in any game, but it is absolutely adorable. And that is selling things to Cap'n's daughter on Tortimer's Island. She likes to play supermarket. So you come up to her and she asks you, what she can buy off of you <laughs> and then you offer something to you and she pays like a dismal amount probably like five percent of what it's worth and the same goes if you try to leave the island with anything in your pockets they just automatically buy it off of you for the low low price of basically nothing <laughs> and the absolutely banana way to make mountains of bells in new leaf is to sell your town this only opens up after 50 days of playing and at least 50 hours of playing and how much you've played and how much you've done in your town affects how much your town sells for so the town I just started back in January, if I were to sell it now, where only I've only done the public works projects that take place on Main Street and built a bridge, and my house is not all the way paid off, it's like more than halfway there and things like that. Anyway, that town only sells for 10 million. And you can also sell your catalog along with that and how full your catalog is determines how much it sells for. So in the case of that town, it would only sell for 2 million. I haven't even been buying like one item a day. It's only an item that I want. So I buy something like every other day. However, my original New Leaf town that has over 500 days in it and over 500 hours. And I have like 65 million in savings and my catalog is almost complete. That town sells for 135 million and my catalog sells for 35 million. Obviously this is only something you want to do if you're restarting, but like them offering me 10 million for my current town, I feel like I definitely haven't paid that much, so. And I haven't put down any flowers or very many projects, could be worth it. <laughs> and moving on to New Horizons, my favorite way to make money in this game. Mm. Flick and CJ. They buy for 150%. It's just nice whenever you see a bigger fish in the water or a nice bug to snatch it up and save it for when they come. Which reminds me, in last week's video for every way to spend bells, I missed the entry fee for the fishing tourney and bug off. That's 500 bells. So let the record be edited there. Early on in the game, whenever Flick came into town, I'd be like, take on my tarantulas. And he'd be like, ah, oh, hello. 
love you so much. Here's hundreds of thousands of bowels. Another NPC you can make money off of is Leaf. He buys weeds for 20 bells per instead of the 10 per that the Nookleans do. Definitely not gonna be a huge money maker, but you know, if you have weeds to sell, you might as well hold out for Leaf. And just like GameCube, there's a glow spot, only a thousand a day. And in this game, you can get money from balloons. I don't believe that occurs any other game. And you can get up to 30,000 of balloons, so that's nice. There's also bell tickets, which you can get by exchanging Nook Miles. And they also are prizes for May Day and the Dream Suite for uploading a dream. And the last way I can think of to make bells in New Horizons is doing the poke exchange on the Happy Home Paradise Island. This is where you can exchange the pokey you made from designing houses in for bells, which also reminds me, I did not mention that in my last video. That is also another way to spend bells, exchanging bells for pokey. If you really love designing the houses, but you just aren't buying the items off of Paradise Island very often, I feel like this is a really good way to make bells. So there you have it. Every way I could think of on how to make bells in every single Animal Crossing. Let me know if I missed any. This time around, I'm feeling a little more confident. Like last week, I was having all these dreams about all these like weird things you could spend money on that don't actually exist in Animal Crossing. But I was like, I forgot that, I forgot that this week. Feeling a lot more confident that I got every way to make money because I've done a lot of that in my life. I hope you enjoyed and next week I'm spending the big buckaroonos in real life for a nice little card opening extravaganza. I'm sure you've noticed since I've gotten this new background, these fine boxes in the background, which unfortunately are hard to see because they're still in their wrap, but these are 30 packs of Japanese e-reader cards. Each of these and I have three and we'll also be opening eight packs the series five amiibo. I'm very excited. I really want to see which NPCs I got in these. And for the e-reader cards, I want to see how few packs I can open to get all the cards. So yeah, tune in next week. And if you missed the video on spending bells, I'll go ahead and have it on the screen right now so you can check that out. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I really do hope you have the loveliest of lovely day. Goodbye.